What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Hold My Nuts Podcast. We talk about everything, see the retention. Now, you're tired of releasing on your keyboards, your laptops, and your desktops. And you're tired of being manipulated and dominated by female coach. Man, you know what I need you to do? Hit subscribe, hit the like, hit the notification bell. Let's go a long way with helping out the channel. Welcome to Hold My Nuts Podcast. What's up? I hope you guys like the intro. Let me know how you feel about that down in the comments, man. Shout out to my mans for putting that together, man. Let's get into this video, man. This video is about the sexual discipline of Jacob. When I really think about this, I'm like... This is some intense discipline on display. And for all the things we know Jacob for being a trickster, a thief, uh, a con man, one of the things we have to give him credit for is sexual discipline. And you might be saying, why is that? Well, according to the text, Jacob fell in love with Laban's daughter, Leah. I'm sorry, Rachel. And old boy was like, yo, if you love her, <clears throat> if you want her, I'll give her to you. But you need to work for me for seven years. So Jacob works for this man for seven years, putting in work, putting in that hard work. And then when it came time for the nuptial feast, for him to actually receive payment for the work that he had been putting in, old Laban, instead of sliding Leah, I was, um, Rachel in the, in the bed, he slid Leah, which was his older daughter. He slid her in, right? And obviously, Jacob thrashes, pops a cherry, the blood is shed, the covenant is established, and he wakes up to Leah, not Rachel. So imagine working for seven years for a woman, and the night you think that you are going to take possession of her, it's a different woman. It's a different woman, not the one that you had hoped for, not the one that you was dreaming about. But the compelling thing about this story is, he worked for her for seven years. Imagine the sexual discipline not to go into her, not to defile her, not to get impatient. This man worked for her for seven years. Not only did he work for her, he didn't even get her after the seven years. He got Leah, which was the older sister. So Levin says, the guy he's working for says, listen, man, it is what it is. Work for me another seven years and she's yours. So Jacob works for her for another seven years. So we, we're talking about 14 years of waiting to actually receive the woman that you have been working for. <laughs> 14 years, bro. He did not defile her. Think about that. We can't go a day without beating our meat. We can't go a week without stroking the chicken, splattering keyboards, laptops, and desktops. We're struggling. This man actually put in hard work for Rachel. 14 years of work before he actually went into her. And she was actually his. Think about that. Think about the sexual discipline. We see in the Old Testament, we see a lot of tragedies happen. I just talked about Dinah and how Shechem violated Jacob's daughter. He saw her. She was so beautiful. He couldn't resist. He rapes her and then tries to go to Jacob and asked for her hand in marriage. He couldn't wait. 
So imagine Jacob's sons. I can understand the anguish and the anger that they had in their hearts. When you think about it, they probably heard the story. Man, my father worked 14 years just to have Rachel. He worked 14 years. He never defiled her. So this is the type of uh, character. This is the type of um, uh, uh, habits that he is instilling in his sons. He, he, he's instilling this in his sons, man. So when they see that their sister was violated just off the cuff, Levi and Simeon brought the sword. You want to check that video out? Check it out. Dinah, the story of Dinah. Oh, they went in and killed everybody. Shechem had no sexual discipline. Imagine violating Rachel after Jacob had worked for her for 14 years. You're going to die. You're going to die. And that death is going to be merciless. It's going to be merciless because of the work, the love, the commitment that was put into acquiring this woman. And when it comes to Leah, you got to think, he worked seven years for her, even though that wasn't what, that's not the woman he wanted, but he still worked for her. So this dude is... His sexual discipline is off the charts. We have the stories of Samson. We have the stories of David. We see their transgressions. Um, Solomon, we see his transgressions. We see a lot of trans transgressions from dudes not being able to control their lust, not being able to control their passions. None of these dudes are, are going to work 14 years for a particular woman. David saw... He saw Bathsheba and he went and just murked the dude, killed their husband, put him on the, on the front lines in the war and took his wife. Jacob actually worked 14 years before he actually got a chance to go into Rachel. That's, a, that's crazy. Imagine what Rachel felt from Jacob in the sense of love. She like, yo, this man really working 14 years just for me. He really working 14 years just to acquire me. So she felt loved by Jacob. This is a real love. This was a real, you know, call it love at first sight, but this was authentic. This was real. Guys, we got to be able to go. We got to be able to go longer streaks, bro. I told y'all, I don't even look at this as it has a streak anymore, baby. This is just a lifestyle. I'm not beating my meat. I'm just not doing that. I'm not. And I've given you guys the reasons as to why that my mind cannot unlearn what it's learned. When you jack off when you beat your meat, when you desecrate laptops, keyboards, when you do these things, you are putting your seed on the altar of Satan. You are trading your spiritual blessings. You're trading your spiritual blessings. You're trading your virtues to demons for three seconds of pleasure. You're trading your virtues to demons for three seconds of pleasure. There's no telling what you're trading. You could be, tr you could be trading me an influential person that's going to help catapult your career to the next level. You could be, you know, trading your, your dream spouse. You could be trading your financial future. You could be trading your health. You could be trading who knows what you're trading to these demons. Not only are you trading your spiritual blessings, but you are forfeiting the virtues that God gives you in order for you to be a trustworthy man to go out and conduct business within the gift that God has established you with. He's, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. 
But in order for your gift to make room for you, you have to have a defined gift, but you also have to have virtues that will allow people to trust you, that will allow people to buy in, that will allow people to want to work with you and not think that you're a sleazeball. Don't beat your meat, man. That's a practice that you have to stop. Jacob worked 14 years for Leah. You can stop beating your meat, bro. He worked 14 years to get Rachel. My bad. I said for Leah. He worked 14 years to get Rachel. 14 years. He did not violate her. He did not defile her. Now, I can't say he ain't go squeeze on them yams. You know, from time to time when he was out there working in the field, I can't say he ain't do that. I can't say, you know, he ain't sneak a little, you know, kissy kiss on the back of the neck, you know, when he out there herding them cows and them goats and them sheep, man. I can't say he ain't do none of that. But what I can say is this, according to the text, he did not defile her. He kept his commitment. He worked for her. He did not do it the easy way. He did it the hard way. And he was rewarded after 14 years. Some of y'all saying like, yo, I ain't working 14 years for no chick. For the right one, you will. And for Jacob, he found the right one. <clears throat> he found the right one, bro. You can stop beating your meat, man. You can stop watching porn. Stop, stop watching porn. Stop watching porn. Stop prostituting yourselves to demonic entities. A lot of you guys think this stuff is natural. It's not. It's not, none of it's natural. None of it is just, this is just how it is. No, this is, is this way because it's intentional. And it's demonic forces that are levying these attacks on you using three different spheres of influence. One, you're being attacked by the world system. Everybody's trying to make you feel like this is okay, this is status quo, this is just how it is. Two, you're being attacked by your weakening of your flesh. The flesh wants to do a lot of things. If you let it, it'll take you right into the grave. Your flesh, flesh doesn't want to wake up at 5 a.m. Your flesh doesn't want to go to the gym. Your flesh does not want to eat right. Your flesh doesn't want to do anything that's right. It only wants to do things that will gratify itself. But we know that gratification is going to be short-lived and you are going to be left with the consequences of your actions. That's number two, the flesh. And number three is demonic influence. A lot of you guys are controlled, influenced by demon spirits, whether these demon spirits inhabit you or whether these are ancestral spirits from your childhood or whatever the case you may pick these bad boys up. But these spirits are following you everywhere you go. And they're influencing you. They're pressuring you. They're injecting thoughts into your mind to make you think that these are your thoughts. And they're driving you. Watch a little porn. You know, oh, go, go to old shorty TikTok. Go to old shorty Instagram. Go get your lust on real quick. You a man, bro. That's just what men do. As long as you don't cross that line, it's all good. He's telling you all of these lies. And now you're starting to think these are your thoughts. These aren't your thoughts. These are the thoughts of negative influences, demonic spirits. I told you guys, there's a difference between urges and temptation. Everybody faces temptation. Urges are demonic. On semen retention, that's a huge thing. Urges, urges. I've done videos about urges in the beginning, not knowing that these are demons. These are demons urging you on. A lot of you want to stop masturbating. You, you, you tell yourself, I don't know why I keep doing this. <clears throat> I want to stop, but you don't stop. I'm going to tell you why you don't stop. Because there's a demonic influence. You can ignore this. You can say, you know what, I'll skip past that part. You can, you can do all of that. But the fact still remains, you're going to keep desecrating laptops, keyboards, You're going to keep desecrating them. 
because there's a demonic influence pushing you to do this. Jacob worked 17 years for Rachel. He worked seven years for a woman that he wasn't even looking for. He had sexual discipline. His, his lust, his passions could not get him to violate and say, you know what, oh, man, I can't wait no more. Let me grab this girl by the, by the neck and just ram her out. Nah, he was respectful. He, he, he followed through on his commitment. He waited and he got what he got. You can stop beating your meat, fellas. You can stop watching porn. You can stop searching for one night stands. All of these things make you debased in your thinking and your understanding. It makes you a slave to women. This is how you get manipulated. This is how you get dominated. This is how these, this, this, this is how these women run you over. This is, they will do this because you can't control your sexual passions. Once you control your sexual passions, can't no woman control you. That's a fact. Once you can control your sexual passions, lusts, and desires, no woman can control you. No woman can manipulate you. If you can't control your sexual passions, you can do whatever it is you're trying to do. But eventually, you're going to give into those passions because there's a demonic influence pushing you. This is Hold My Nuts Podcast, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'm going to holler at you in the next one. Peace.